Hey guys, uh, so today's video is going to be something similar kind of to my last two off videos, one somewhere my typical rank gameplay, uh, where I'm going to be ranking the siege operators, but this time I'm not doing them in a top 5 fashion, I'm going to just rank them somewhere on this chart and basically try to give you a short description on each operator and why I'm putting them where they are on the chart. Uh, so basically I'm just going to go through all the operators that are currently in Rainbow Six Siege and explain why I feel where they fit on the chart and explain why I think they are there. Uh, so without further ado, this is going to be a rather long video, so I'm going to try to get through these pretty quickly. That way it's not incredibly long, but um, yeah. Uh, so starting off, I'm put Ying and A tier. With current meta and with Ying the way she is with her three Candela charges and two smoke grenades, I have to put her at a high roll because Ying is an incredibly powerful operator that can pretty much overrun a lot of uh, a lot of defensive strategies if she's able to have a good team around her. Uh, only reason she's not S tier is because she does require some kind of cohesion with her team to be completely useful, but she is by herself a really strong operator. She, if given the chance, she can burn all the ADSs just due to the fact that she can place them on barricades or something near the ADS to the point where the Candelas will still go off and burn ADS, but that's really hard to do. Uh, it's more likely that she'll do it on a barricade. But that being said, Ying is an A tier operator, really strong and really good in the current meta. Uh, for the next operator, I'm going to put Blackbeard down in D tier. Uh, it's not that he's a completely useless operator and an F tier operator in itself, I just don't feel that Blackbeard has much place in the meta with his only real utility being his flash grenades and his face shield, which overall doesn't really matter. I mean, I guess it does give you slight advantage in some gunfights, but in a lot of situations, especially with the way the season's been playing out, with uh, the way the servers are, you get swung and you don't even notice it for a good half a second anyway, so that's pretty much all the time that the, the shield saved you anyway. So unless you have the reaction time of Shaiko or God, you're just, you're just losing that gunfight 9 times out of 10. Uh, next operator is going to be C tier Doc. Uh, Docker, Doc's actually a, still a good operator. He did lose his uh, three or 2.5 site within the last update due to the fact that they just took pretty, pretty much all the ACOGs off, except for I think like Vigil's boss, she has one, but outside of that, no one has an ACOG anymore. And Doc, that was pretty much his strongest point. I mean, being able to swing and just get the frags, and if you lost some health, you just heal back up and you swing again because you had the confidence of the ACOG and the healing. So, Doc overall is still a good operator, I just don't see him getting played as much anymore, and I just don't see him as viable without the ACOG because of the angles he was able to hold before, uh, or pretty much like obsolete, and anyone who can, any other operator can really hold the angles that he can because they have the same sights. Uh, next operator I'm actually going to put in B tier is Alibi. Now, Alibi being higher than Doc, some people might argue, some people might disagree with, but I think Alibi is actually a better operator. She does present a shield, uh, her, her gadgets do require you to 9 times out of 10 shoot them, Due to the fact that you cannot trust any intel, especially if like you're able to burn the, the attacking team's drones. If they swing a corner, they see a shield and one of these gadgets on them, they're more than likely going to shoot them, which is going to reveal their location for the next, I think it's like three to five seconds. And when you're on an attacking team, you don't want that to happen. So often, more often than not, it delays a lot of time. And they have to keep being wary of them because at any point in time, you could switch place with any of the alibi devices. Uh, she's not an A tier operator due to the fact that her like overall kit isn't all that great, but I do think it is really a, still a pretty strong kit and belongs somewhere near B tier. Uh, next operator is going to be Dokubi. I'm putting her in A tier because her roam clearing capabilities and the fact that she does have smokes and the DMR and just the entire kit for uh, Dokubi is really strong. The fact that she can get a kill and somehow hack cams. Uh, basically taking the cams that sometimes defenders bring a lot of with the maestros, the echoes now, because in the last update she can now hack even echo cams, uh, just normal defaults, valve cams, anything like that. Adoka B actually, if she's able to secure frag, is a really strong operator, and even without being secure frag, she's able to clear out little rats from corners if she's able to just drop a phone call. Uh, and if maestros on cams and the execute's going down, she can take them off cams just by calling, he can't use his turret. Plants able to go down a lot more safely and smoothly. I just think over Doki overall is a really strong operator. Uh, next one, I'm going to put Thatcher. Now, Thatcher did receive a really recent uh, nerf that some people think really did cripple him. But I do feel that Thatcher is still an S tier operator due to the fact that he can d even still disable gadgets for 15 seconds, which is more than enough time for any preacher on this list to open a wall. Uh, he can do that through walls, so there's just something, there's very little counterplay there. He's actually still a really strong operator. Some people don't like to play him as much just because of the fact that he doesn't destroy anymore, but I do think that Thatcher is incredibly strong because he can deny pretty much all of the utility on defense and disable it and drop echoes and everything like that. I think Thatcher is overall a really strong operator. Uh, next operator I'm going to put on the A tier list is going to be Capital. Capital would be S tier if Lamai didn't exist, I'm not going to lie to you. 
Uh, Capito is an incredibly strong operator that can clear out anchor positions and still smoke plant. He also presents the hard pushing tool that was released this release patch, I believe it was. Uh, that can open up walls uh, if they're not electrocuted or muted, obviously, but he just really has an overall really strong kit. Uh, the only thing his real counter is Wamai, which is incredibly prevalent in the current meta due to the fact that there's a whole bunch of utility burning, Jaeger's ADSs, Jaeger's shield, ADSs, Maestro Kings, all that other stuff. Uh, if, if Wamai didn't exist, Capital could easily be an S-tier operator. It's just the fact that Wamai is so prevalent and always brought that he just doesn't seem to get the, the full use out of his kit, and I just feel like he cannot be an S-tier operator. Next to you is going to be Mira. Mira does get a lot of ban in the current meta due to the fact that Mira is incredibly strong to play against in a lot of situations where teams just don't really know how to clear them without putting themselves at danger or at risk. And that's really where Mira shines. She completely has shifted the meta and that's why she's continuously banned due to the fact that she has so many anchor positions that she's able to create on her own just due to the fact that her mirrors can just apply at one-way angle where they can be peeked off of or opened or anything like that. And they're able to get kills off of just Mira in herself is a really strong operator and she belongs in this tier's position. Next operator in the B tier is going to be Buck. Buck in the recent patch also lost his grenades. Buck pre nades probably would be higher, but probably not. Buck is a really good operator to comply vertical play from both below and above. And I think that is incredibly undermined and a lot of Buck players don't seem to use the other version of vertical play except for in like Chalet. For some reason, I noticed that a lot of bucks, and ranked at least, do not seem to try to buck from below, but only seem to buck from above, which is, I think, undermining how strong buck can be. Buck uh, being able to breach the ceiling is a lot stronger than Sledge in my eyes for that specific area, just because he's able to shoot upwards and clear anchor positions from downstairs on a map like Cafe. This is incredibly prevalent, like on a cocktail take. Just because Buck, you can send a Buck downstairs and somebody to cover him, he can pretty much clear the entirety of Cocktail just from Bucking below and force them to either challenge him downstairs or run away, where hopefully your teammates are helping to secure those free frags since they're just kind of running around. Next operator is going to be Glaz. Glaz before this year, uh, before this season probably would have been down where Blackbeard is, but due to the current due to the current meta, with him being able to practically walk in his smokes again like old Glaz. I cannot see myself putting him down there. Glaz is able to smoke in, I think he only has to stand still for half a second before he's able to get full vision back in his uh, scope now. And I think that is incredibly strong just the fact because you can't see him, but he can see you and you're glowing. So it's like, even if it's like, it's not like normal sees you, he like can, you're glowing for him. And it takes a two shot to kill, I believe, or down on three armors, which is an incredibly strong thing for Glaz. It's good to see that Glaz is back in meta, but he is still... One of those operators that I could put, he's arguably A tier, but I do put him down in B just because I haven't seen him played as much. Maybe they'll change due to time, due to the meta with the Yings and a whole bunch of the old glass Ying meta, which is just super fun to deal with. If you remember that, I'm being sarcastic, but I, I yeah, it's a super, it's a, it's a really good combo. And Glass, if it comes back more prevalent in the scene, I will probably put him, rank him higher. But for now, I put him down in B tier due to the fact that he's like rarely played. Uh, next operator I'm going to put actually in A tier is Clash. Now some people might be surprised with this one, but Clash is an incredibly annoying operator to deal with if you're an uncoordinated team. Clash can basically stall an entire push if you don't have the utility to use on her, and due to the current meta with the Jaeger, well, my Maestro Cans, Shields, and all the other stuff, you really don't have a lot of utility to burn on a Clash, so you find yourself in a position a lot of times where you're just forced to try to get a pinch on her or something, and it takes a lot of time. She can delay a lot, a lot of... Uh, pressure from the attacking team just because of the fact that you can constantly shock them and do damage and if you're pushing through barbed wire in a clash you're just taking a lot of health you're getting smoked there's just so much utility that defenders bring currently that clash can pr pr pretty much win you around by herself uh practically because she's able to just burn so much of the time and take so much of your health away even though it doesn't seem like much at first just over time you're more and more of your health part just starts to dissipate and you don't much you can really do about that late round uh next up reader i'm going to put down in c tier is Monting. Monting, I, I did, in my, if, if you guys remember my, my top five, I put him as an honorable mention, but I just, with the current change, the recent changes to Monting and Shields in general, I do can't really see myself putting him higher in like an A or C, S tier. Uh, prior to the recent, the nerfs to Shields, I probably would have had him up here. It's just the fact that Monting's current shield works to similar to Clash's, which just isn't as strong for as much as you want it to be, because you, as Monting, it's a diff completely different play style where... Clash is she's backing up towards sight, she's usually playing more defensively, but when you're playing a Montang, you have to play aggressive or more aggressing towards sight. You can't just play Montang and back out of a door. That's where that's Clash's strong suit. That's Montang's weakness. He has to go towards the defenders. 
And the way his shield works now with it constantly being able to be battered back and pretty much impossible to lose a Monte in 1v1 now. I just have to put him down in C tier. He's not as low as Blackbeard, but he is still really strong. He's, he's he's a decently strong operator, but I just I can't put him much higher than that just due to how the fact that he's playing now. Uh, next operator I'm putting up in S tier is going to be Maestro. Maestro is a really good operator. Presents two bulletproof cameras. He has impacts, uh, barbed wire. He has the Bale of secondary, and of course he has the infamous 81 as his primary. Maestro has a really good kit. He's able to impact trick if needed. He's able to deny plant. He's able to do constant damage to attackers throughout the round. Maestro just overall is a really good operator, and I can't see myself putting him much really anywhere or lower than maybe A. I, you can argue for A, but I just feel that he is an S tier operator in himself, and that's where I'm going to leave him. Another S tier operator is going to be Maverick. Maverick, I've already explained if you guys watched my tier, uh, my top five attacking video, I think Maverick is the best operator in the game. I mean, he's at a wall, but he's a hard breacher with literally no counters. He brings grenades to the M4, and he's a three speed. So I mean, what else can you need in an operator? He's able to open up walls and make them soft at least, or he can make his own little crouch hole if you want to, which has been done plenty of times before. Uh, it's just Maverick overall is just a really good operator, and I can't see myself putting him much lower. I can't even see myself putting him lower than S. He's just a really strong, strong uh, hard breach with no counter and no real struggles to deal with. Uh, next, I'm going to do Nomad in A tier. I, I know some people, she wasn't my top five, probably expected her to be in S tier, but she's going to be in my A tier just because I don't feel that she gets as much uh, strength as the other operators that are currently in S tier. Don't get me wrong, she's a strong operator in her own right. She's able to deny flanks. She's able to op deny most hopouts outside. She also brings three flash grenades. Uh, she, the AK is not a bad weapon. 41 bullets, really good weapon. I just don't see her really... I see her as a lazy flank watch. I feel like her, the job that she does is strong, but can be done by a drone. Uh, except for, you know, obviously the pushing part and, you know, putting them completely vulnerable. But Nomad is a lazy flank watch. In a lot of cases, when you bring in a Nomad, you're sacrificing other utility. So Nomad is a strong operator, but I just don't see her as an S tier operator in myself. Next operator is going to be an A tier, going to be Valkyrie. Valkyrie is another good operator, and arguably some people might put her higher just because of the fact that her prevalence is really strong if the other team does not bring an IQ. Valkyrie is the only defending operator that's able to throw cameras outside, or at least like place them, like not. I mean, technically my show camps and bulletproof camps go outside, but you obviously have to expose yourself because you're going to be placing them instead of just throwing them. Uh, Valkyrie also brings the Nitro Cells, she can use her cameras outside and inside for vertical play with the recent Z-Ping buff, so that was another buff to Valkyrie in itself, because you're not, you're not required to hard ping anymore to basically figure out where the attackers are if you do want to floor bang or Nitro Cell by chance. So Valkyrie just overall is a really good operator, and I have to put her up here in A tier Frost, I'm putting an F tier, I'm not going to explain why, if you look down you shoot Frost mats. I, I just don't really see Frost as that viable, she does have a very strong effectancy rate, in higher tiers, but that's just because people don't play her. So like, just on like the eight times that she's brought, she someone catches a frost map four times. I just don't really see that as good enough data to put her any higher than that. Twitch, I'm gonna put in D tier. Her drones are really loud. She's able to shock stuff, which is really cool. And don't get me wrong, the recent changes to her with her like constant, like unlimited technically amount of uh, twitch shots is really cool. But most defenders are gonna hear and shoot her drones. Uh, just don't really see her working much out in high elo at all. Usually when you bring a twitch. Uh, at least when my stack was telling you to bring a Twitch, you, they're usually trolling. It's just it's just how it is because you're just playing for the F2. Uh, what she did lose ACOG on as well, so I just don't really see her any higher than this position. This is position is even arguably too high in my eyes. Gridlock's a C tier. Uh, she brings smoke grenades and those gridlock charges that I think are really good and have high potential, but most times they're not. They're across the map, and you cannot do anything about a gridlock because anyone can really shoot them. They're not like incredibly strong so unless you put them really closely you won't even hear them getting shot or like even punched so gridlock is good for flank watch if you're able to like position yourself near them and you can hear the defenders trying to push through them but outside of that i feel like she doesn't really bring much because you can just kind of shoot or punch them and no one really know about it her smoke sprinkler are really strong and both of her weapons are really good weapons so that's why i'm putting her c instead of d uh, she does bring utility that is needed for the team and then she has a three armor on attack which means she can take a lot of damage so I just felt comfortable putting her in the C position. Next one I'm going to put in B tier is going to be Pulse. He's able to supply intel through his team through walls. Only real counters being IQ really. And technically Thatcher. You could Thatcher. I mean he can't use a scanner. But IQ is really the only ones who can identify his location. Even though like on a map like Constant. If he's going to be able to go down to Archives or something like that in Garage. He can feed his team a constant intel through his Pulse scanner. Where they cannot be destroyed unless he is killed. Uh, from all the way in basement, which is really strong in itself, and I just feel like Pulse is on a B tier operator. He could arguably be A tier. I just felt comfortable putting him in B. 
Lion, I'm putting in C tier. With current changes and a lot of the way the meta is played now, Lion just doesn't affect that much. Normally, like, if you're having to deal with Lion, most teams will just adjust to a mute, and they don't really play that aggressive anymore. Lion in his prime was easily an S or A tier operator, but I just don't feel that he gets as much play, and he doesn't bring much utility outside of his three flash grenades. Unless you're playing a super aggro team, he just doesn't really see much use at all, so I just don't really justify bringing a Lion. Tachanka. If I'm bringing technically the updates out, so I'm going to put Tachanka in B tier. I've yet to see his full potential because he's not allowed in competitive play, and the way people play in rank just doesn't really justify how strong he can be. Therefore, I'm putting Tachanka in a B tier because that's where I just feel comfortable having him right now. He is a good operator now with the flames. He does have 10 of his flame charges that last for, I think, 3 seconds, and he does have his portable turret gun now, which is able to make rotates. Uh, that's the only reason I have him in B instead of like C because his flames are incredibly potent. And can deny any person off plant. Doesn't matter if it's the gridlock, the three armor I was talking about earlier, or or an ash, the three the three speed. It doesn't really matter. He, his flames are, will force you to get off plant because they do that much damage. And he's a really good operator. Next one on B tier is going to be Sophia. I was thinking potentially putting her in A tier, but I do feel more comfortable putting her B tier. Uh, Sophia is able to bring just as much utility as a most a team, uh, most uh, soft breachers, including like ash and. When it comes to that, like, I'm talking about actual, like, destructibility, like, as much as, like, Ash, and, well, not much in the you know, next season, but for now, Ash and Sledge. So she's able to destroy Maestro Cams and Shields. She also has those stuns that are incredibly good for maybe if you're about to round a corner, but you know a defender's close. They're pretty much stunned, and they, there's nothing they can do about it, really, unless they pre-fire you. Nine times out of ten, you're able to get that kill because they can't really turn or anything like that, and they have a slight bit of fuzziness, so it's hard to see when you actually turn the corner. Sophia is just a really good strong operator, and with the proximity of her stuns, just everything, her whole kit, I do feel that she's around B, even arguably A tier. This is just where I felt better putting her. Cade, I'm going to put actually in a C tier, just because the operators in A tier do exist. Cade is the only operator able to electrify hatches, technically, Bandit can, but like you'll just shoot them because you're kind of being top, but he can do them from below which is incredibly strong and very good. I just don't see him being as good due to the fact that Cades can be dealt with rather easily if uh, Thatcher or Maverick is on the board. Obviously, if both these operators are banned, there are alternative ways, but it's a little bit more difficult. But he doesn't provide more difficulty than any other operator would when it comes to destroying those. Like you can just waste a nade on him from Sledge if you're able to like, angle like on Clubhouse or anything like that. It's not like, it's not as, it's it's still annoying, but I just don't feel like he's more annoying than the other operators that are on the list. Next one in B tier is going to be Mute. Uh, basically, he has four Mute charges that he can put all around the map that I think are incredibly strong. Uh, when you're able to Mute off entrances, is basically cut off drones, cut off any of the attacking teams, like real intel, either whether it be on site or on a roam. Mute is just a really good operator. He does deny walls, simply the cave, except he doesn't destroy it. He just mutes them and presents them from going off. Mute and his ult can also make rotates. I technically can make Cade can make rotates with the recent button nerfs to TCSG. I just don't feel that it's justifiable enough to bring that weapon. As for Mute, shotgun is incredibly strong and will always be brought. It also has SMG 11 secondary. So there's overall, I feel like Mute is around a B tier operator, arguably A, but I just feel like B tier is where I'm putting him. Next operator is going to be Thermite in A tier with current changes uh, to Ace. I would have had him probably, actually, probably still would have had him here. Thermite is a really good operator. You can open rather large holes into the walls. Um, basically opening up an entire two, three line of people. I want to say, like, you can fit three operators side by side through his walls, which is incredibly strong. It's a really big hole, or as he would say, big effing hole, but I'm not going to say that. Um, so we can open up two of these, uh, basically on, like, large holes, like, simply like a CCTV or a garage wall and consulate. Just having those big holes is really helpful for your team because it doesn't force the defenders, it doesn't give the defenders like the advantage on having like a really small angle to watch. They have a lot of different angles they need to watch now. Just be the fact that Thermite can open a massive hole in the wall. Uh, right next to Thermite, we have Abana. Abana is, you could say, probably around the same, but she doesn't make big holes, but she does have more of her gadget. In the next patch, she will be having able to use her gadget a little bit more diversely. But this is for season three, so I'm not going to go there. Basically, she's able to open up, I think it is three hatches, or she can open up a crouch hole in this line of sight. Uh, she also has the flash grenades and her primary weapon, which does not uh, does 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 not tickle. It does a fair bit of damage, and she does carry the very nice secondary. She's overall a bonus kit, puts her around an eighth tier operator because she does she's a hard breacher and really strong. D tier rook just brings impacts and he can guarantee that you'll be down. I just don't think Rook is all that strong. 
especially in the current meta when there's other operators that are much more potent and much better to bring. I just, just don't see much Rook as uh, as that strong of an operator. B tiers again is Ash. Ash is on my um, personally for me the same level as Sophia. She is necessary, so actually I could argue that she's A tier. Her and Sophia are both necessary operators due to the fact that there's going to be always shields, maestros, Malusis, anything like that. But overall, I just don't see her as better than some of these other operators that I have above. Actually, I changed my mind. I'm putting Ash and Sophia up here. I'm sorry. I'm like, I that's it's really late, and you probably watched the first part and called me stupid. I do. I, I want to put them in A tier just due to the fact that there's just so many shields and ADSs and wise everything. Those are incredibly potent operators in the current meta, and I feel that they actually belong up there. Like after further further thought, I don't know what I was thinking when I put them down in B. Um, Bandit B tier. Uh, pretty much does the same thing as Kate, except we can't get hatches. Does have a nitro cell in the MP7, which is really good, but I just don't see him being as big as a problem as any real like i just don't see the wall denos is not big of a problem i'd rather a current lineup i if i were to bring one i'd rather bring something that provides a shield a nitrous cell well ben has a nitrous cell a shield or like something like that that would require the t uh attacking team just use a little bit more time than bandit does a lot of times you're having maverick or thatcher on the board so you're just able to pretty much get rid of them with little to no difficulty and if you're not you're able to go below if other any other other operators that are up in a tier or just shoot through the ground, just get rid of the bandits. I just don't think they're he's higher deserving. I think the B tier is pretty much comfortable where he fits. Ella is going to be C tier. Our gadget's really good. She does present a shield. It's the only reason she's up here. If she didn't have the shield, she probably would be down in D tier. I'm not going to lie. Ella shotgun is really strong from pretty much like out to 15 feet. It can still like three shot you. So the, she has that going for her. And the, Eve, uh, the scorpion is getting significantly better by the update. Uh, a couple of dates back, it was literally useless, but now it's actually a usable weapon that can be used at a decent range. I'd say it's from around 15 to 30 feet, she's still actually viable as well before. It wasn't outside of 5. Obviously, original Ella was broken, so I, I just, I'm just i not going to count that. But I'm talking about after they nerfed her a bit. She, I just think Ella's around a C tier operator. Her gadget's really good. She has a shield, and she also has a shotgun that is very dangerous. Uh, the next operator I'm going to be put in B tier along with Buck is going to be Sledge, the other soft creature that's able to basically open a lot of vertical play from above. He also has those grenades in the SMG-11 secondary. Oh, don't forget about that L8. Um, seeing that Thatcher did recently lose his ACOG, he does, he's like one of like the four attackers that still has an ACOG, so he has that going from as well. Um, just Sledge is just a good operator, and I just put him around B tier just because he does his Vertical play has SMG11, has needs, just really strong operator. S tier, going to be Echo. Echo talks about himself in the current update, obviously, next update. He does lose invisibility in his drones, but I still think he might be decently strong. The only time will tell. But for now, he has the invisible drones. He has the impacts to deny potential hard breaches like Ace. Um, if he's open like a single slot, you can just impact trick and get rid of the other ones that are there on the wall. Just overall, Echo. Echo's a good operator, and I feel like he's an S tier operator in my eyes. Castle, putting him in the C tier. Uh, he doesn't supply as much time, especially with a lot of the attacking operators having breaching charges or just sledging them open. Castle is good, and you think he's better than D tier because he's able to deny lines of sight without you actually having you actually have to use utility on them. Uh, so I just feel like he's around here, just a comfortable fit for him. Uh, next operator is going to be Vigil, also putting him C tier. Vigil is a good operator, but he doesn't really bring much for the team. He's able to burn a lot of time due to the fact that he can't be seen by drones for the times he's vigiled, and he's able to take out a lot of those. But outside of that, I just don't see him doing much for the team in the long run. I, there's other operators I'd rather bring because he doesn't bring any like time burner with utility-wise. There's only reason I just don't see him as a higher-tiered operator, but I think that's where I'm going to keep him. S-tier, I'm going to put Smoke. Smoke has been an operator that's been in meta since he's been released. Uh, he's able to do a very amount of, good amount of damage with the potent smoke that he does carry. He has the shield, he has the 11 he has the rotates. He's just an all-time favorite. He's really required in most lineups due to the fact that he's just pretty much, he's just a staple of Rainbow Six Siege. When you think of an operator that you're pretty much always going to bring, you're thinking about a smoke. Uh, nine times out of ten, if you have a smoke, you're doing the right thing just because of the fact that he has just the utility that's needed for the team, whether it's rotates, whether it's plant denial, everything. He's just, he's just an all-around good operator. Uh, B tier following is going to be Mozzie. I feel like Mozzie is a really good operator, but I don't see him as an A tier operator. He does have the P10 Roni that does have the 1.5 sight that is really good now. Also, that commando does not hurt at all. Um, does not hurt to have his ult as well. It, it does damage. Um, he's able to deny multiple drone entries. Uh, waste a lot of time. If he's able to capture a drone, he does supply intel for the team, which is very good. 
Uh, but I just don't see him as a higher operator because it's just overall it's very unlikely that you get a drone and you do may waste time. But I just don't feel that like he's just S. He just don't feel like he's A tier in my eyes. Um, next operator surprisingly going to be an A tier is going to be Fuse. Uh, with the recent changes to Fuse with him having an extra cluster charge, Fuse is able to get a lot of damage done on site. He also carries around that AK-12 secondary that we hate to see. I mean, you absolutely hate to find out that you have to swing against this guy. That AK-12 does not play. It will do its damage really quick to you and put you down if he's not able to headshot you first. Uh, just fuse a raw. I just feel like he's an A-tier operator and that's where he belongs. Splits, F-tier, terrible operator. I mean, the operator... <laughs> I'm, not, I'm sorry, that's toxic. I just think Blitz isn't that good unless you're played with like a really, really structured team. Uh, you're able to get a crossfire on him pretty easily. Since he's not as strong as Montan because he can't fully extend, he's exposed a lot more often and able to die to a lot more things. Obviously, the recent nerf to shields didn't help his case at all. I mean, you can just punch him and it's kind of over for him. There's a lot more damage that can be done to him with nitro cells and everything like that. I just don't feel like he's that good of an operator. Finca as there well. She she reduces recoil. She has grenades, which is cool and all, but I just don't feel overall that Finca's kit is that good. Um, Jaeger. Jaeger's going to be an A-tier operator for obvious reasons. He's able to catch and deny grenades and flashes, but I just don't feel that Jaeger is S-tier in my eyes. He's a staple of most lineups he's usually brought, but I just don't see him as an S-tier op. He's always going to be, he's obviously a really good operator and present, present in most teams. I think he's like a 90% pick rate or something like that in ranked, but I just don't think that Jaeger's utility and overall makes him S-tier. He is really strong though in his own right. Caviar, F-tier. I'm She's just, she silent steps and she interrogates, but I mean, like, most times, especially, like, in a Walgreens team, doesn't let her get an interrogation off, so I just don't feel that she's that great in my eyes. Lesion D tier, now that might be controversial just through the fact that he does bring the T5, which is a fan favorite in those Lesion mines, but overall, if you're bringing Lesion, you're sacrificing utility that you could be using elsewhere, and I just don't think that Lesion is anything more than a comfort op in my eyes, just because you're not able to, like, watch a staircase. I mean, you can bring barbed wire, and there's other operators now with other other traps and other things that are brought in, that can be brought now. I just don't see him as a necessity as he once was. Legion used to be a lot better when he used all of his goo mines, so whenever they did hurt you immediately, I, it would be more arguable for a C or a B, but currently I see him as a D-tier operator in my eyes. Uh, IQ is going to be B-tier for me, and for obvious reasons, I feel like there's just so many gadgets on the attacking team, I mean the defending team, that IQ can spot out and shoot through walls. Obviously, there's op operators that can destroy said gadgets, um, but IQ is able to identify them for them. She's also able to get Valkyms, which Valk is incredibly potent. She's able to get Yokai's, which is also incredibly potent and brought. She's able to floor bang, ADS's, identify Wamai's, anything like that. Literally everything. She, IQ is like the operator that can see it all. I just feel like putting her here is very good. Capkin, F tier, uh, just, just not good in my eyes. He, he can... He puts his captain down some doors, they get droned out, then they're useless. I just don't I just don't see Captain as a really strong operator. I mean he might work out for you in rank, but against most skill teams, they're just gonna drone, see a captain, shoot them, and move on. He has the sausage and his other primary fit the name of it, but it's really good SMG, don't get me wrong. It no little to no recoil, good op good guns. But I just don't feel like his kid is strong enough to justify him putting him anywhere higher. Jackal, I'm gonna put C tier. Jackal's able to track down roamers, but a good team usually can have cutoff drones or just do the droning themselves. I just don't feel like that overall cut it brings. He only brings really smokes and the fact that he can track down roamers. Uh, he's he's a comfort op at best just through the fact that he can help with clearing roam. I guess more efficiently if the other teams if your team is struggling with droning, he's can help with that. But overall, I just don't think that Jackal's an incredibly strong operator. Um, I'm going to put Warden down in D tier. Don't get me wrong, when used against the right lineups, like a lineup that's running a Ying Glass, for example, he's really good, but he's incredibly situational. Nine times out of ten, you don't need him. There's just other operators you can bring. He does present a shield to MPX and that uh, smoke shotgun, which is really good. Don't get me wrong. I just don't see him as an operator that belongs any higher than this due to the fact that he's incredibly situational. Um, Nook. I want to put Nook in F tier, but I feel like she's actually stronger. I'm, I'm putting Nook in D tier due to the fact that there is so much utility on the defending team that supplies intel, and she's able to just kind of sneak past that. Uh, like I said, she's just a situational op, though. She's not terrible. She's just situational. If you're going to do for a sneaky play or something like that, she's really good for that kind of thing because she's able to, for example, in Bank and Garage, she can get right past the, gra the garage cam. If there's a yokai in there, a maestro, anything like that, they can see her. She can get past that without being seen or detected which is really good in its own right, and I just feel like she's just, it, given the right situation, she's good, but for most nine times out of ten, she's not. I just, like I said, very situational operator. 
Uh, well, mine is S tier, and I feel like that's I feel like that's justifiable. It's just the current meta is basically revolving around the fact that he exists. His shield, his gadget, his the fact that he's only supported with ADSs, he's pretty much untouchable. It's just well, mine's a really good operator. You know, the effect of the meta really heavily, and that's why he's actually being, like, everything's changing, I feel like, due to the fact that he exists. Mai's a good op, and I just feel like he's an S-tier operator in my eyes. He brings a shield, he brings his gadget, his magnets, they can pull all of the attacking, including capitals, like, throwables or shootables, I should say. I don't know, how the fuck, however you want to call it. And he can pull them towards his magnets, and I just feel like that's really strong. Um, Amaro, D-tier. She has the G8. That's pretty much the only reason she's not an F tier. I'm not gonna lie to you. Her her gadget's incredibly loud, but in, with the recent changes to her, is pretty good. If no one's around still, I mean, she can still get pre-fired pretty easily. Don't get me wrong, but more often than not, she just doesn't bring any utility for a team. So I just can't justify putting her any higher. But that's where I'm gonna put her. Callie's gonna be C tier. Um, I could argue for B tier, but I just feel like um, more often than not, if it wasn't for her weapons like low RPM. She could be B tier, so her weapon does, has a very slow RPM, so you really have to hit those shots, and for a lot of players, that might be hard. Um, she's able, she's actually the only one, she's, I say in gadget why she's slightly better than Dash, due to the fact that she can destroy things through the walls instead of just disabling them. But outside of that, her gun is very underwhelming to play if you're not able to hit your shots, so I just don't see her as a, as a B or an A tier operator in my eyes. Goyo is going to be B tier, uh, and for, I think, good reason. Some people might put him A tier, I'm putting him in B tier. Uh, he is able to delay a, dis a decent amount of time due to the fact that he does have a shield that can be shot whenever the other your team decides to either shoot it or the other team decides to destroy it. Uh, well placed Goyos are really hard to deal with, and if they're placed in your plant, they can obviously deny because they blow up and have fire on the ground for I think it's like 5 to 10 seconds, I don't remember the exact time. But he's able to burn a lot of time with his utility, just the fact they have to clear them and they have to use utility on them, it's just a big kind of ordeal. Um, Oryx is D tier. He's incredibly situational in my eyes. I mean, don't get me wrong. He's he's not he's not a terrible operator, but I don't see him as a good operator. He has a T5 now over the MP5, which is good, but I just don't see him as always good because he's really loud. Uh, usually, if you're anywhere in the area, you hear that jumping animation. You hear him make that loud grunt, and he just doesn't seem to be that good uh, if you're able to pretty much pick him off freely because he's in his animation. He can't have his gun up. Um, Ayana, I'm putting C tier, and some people might kind of feel she blurs D, but I think she's actually a kind of good operator. She's able to supply a drone that sounds like an operator, so it forces the enemy to react, and if you're playing off of that, you're able to get a, re a pretty free refrag on a drone and not lose any into, uh, any individuals on your team. If it was a drone, maybe a defender might not react the same because it's just a drone, but when you hear the loud footsteps and it sounds like a person's coming towards you, 9 times out of 10, if you're not hearing the Ayana actually make the gadget go off she's able to get a free kill for her teammates if they're able to play off them properly um ace is s tier uh, i was thinking about putting him down in a tier don't get me wrong but i feel like s tier is proper for him even though he did get that nerf recently that took like his third row or whatever from him he's still a really strong operator he can throw multiple of them really quickly so it's really hard to bandit trick or cage trick or anything like that and it's kind of difficult to deal with. He also has the AK-12 and smokes, which is just really strong. Um, ASMI is just, this is where I feel comfortable putting him. Sorry if it sounds like I'm rushing. It's because this, this video is already 33 minutes. I'm trying to get this done with. Uh, Malusi's A tier, and so is Zero. Um, I'm just throwing them in there now, and I'll explain right now. Um, Malusi's gadgets just slows and slows people, forces people to clear them. It's very dangerous to try to knife. Uh, she also has the MP5, even though she had the T5-4, the MP5 is still not a bad weapon and a sleeper if, if you're not paying attention. She's able to take out a lot of utility, just because of the fact you have to deal with them. She has nitro cell to clear uh, any needs from certain positions, whether they're planting, she can deny plant, that kind of thing. Zeros, cams, I feel like don't get overused, uh, or underwhelmingly over unused in rank due to the fact that just maybe people don't understand how strong his gadget can be. Uh, his primary weapon, I forget the name of it, is actually a lot better than the MP7 in my eyes, but a lot of people play the M7, but his other weapon is really good. It's like another AK-12 in my eyes. Really strong weapon. He has the four cameras that can either burn ADSs or mines or watch flank or just get intel on sight. Zero overall is a really good operator, and I feel like he's around A tier. Uh, th sorry guys, this is like a 35 minute video. I normally try not to make videos this long, but... I wanted to do a tier list, and it did take a lot of time, because I was trying to explain why I was putting people there, wherever they were. If you did watch to the end, you guys are fucking goats. I love you guys. But uh, my next video is going to be on Monday. If you're still here, yeah, my next video is going to be on Monday. I'll catch you guys then. Um, but yeah.